What's up everyone? So I'm currently working on finishing part two of the 240's interior restoration, but before I can start putting panels back in and fitting the new carpet, I wanted to install a completely new audio system right down to the wires. I'm by no means a professional, but I thought while everything is still taken out, this would be a really good opportunity to learn what goes into putting in a full system and also put my personal touch on it and just kind of have some fun. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm taking out all of the 4x6 speakers and replacing them with larger 6.5 inch speakers. There's going to be a dedicated amp for them, I got a doubled in head unit with some modern features going in, and a powered sub out back, so it should be really nice when it's all done. Before we get started, a huge thanks to Ting Tools. They reached out to me a little while ago after seeing some of my earlier 240 videos and offered to send me this awesome tool chest with everything that I'm going to need to work on this car. So it's been great and I'm actually in the process of doing a big brake upgrade on this car with the Hummel Mechanics so be on the lookout for that in the future too. So let's go ahead and start off with the driver's door. One portion of the Part 2 interior restoration is going to be laying down sound damping material all throughout the 240's interior. I ended up going with second skin for all of my products and I have some left over, so I want to tackle the door panel as well now that we have the speaker out. There's two reasons you want to do this, one to prevent vibrations, and two to try to capture as much of the sound as possible and shove it back into the interior instead of it getting lost in the door panel. You can also do some other things that might be even more effective, such as closing in the speaker. I'm not going to be doing that because it's pretty weatherproof right here. I'm not really worried about the speaker getting wet or anything like that. But I have some other products I'm going to put in here that will kind of you know, help facilitate since I'm not going to be doing that. Okay, now that all the vibration dampen material is in the door, I'm going to move on to installing these speaker tweakers. This is another thing that I picked up from Second Skin. It's pretty cool. Being that this is one big open door cavity and my speakers are enclosed, this is designed to take the sound coming off of the back of the speaker, harness it, and then push it forward back into the interior instead of it getting lost in the door panel. So all I have to do really is coat the back of it in super glue. You can also use Velcro if you like, but I want to make sure that this never comes off and there's no chance of it sliding around so we're gonna get that permanently mounted in the door panel it's gonna make a big difference the trick is to try to position this so it'll be right behind the speaker once it's installed just move it around get it to set it shouldn't take too long and then we can move on to the next step while the speaker tweaker is curing up in the front door, I'm going to go ahead and remove this metal bracket. This bracket is what the rear speaker directly attaches to. There used to be like a plastic mounting bezel right here, similar to what you saw in the front door, but obviously that was taken out at some point. After I get this removed, I'm going to have to start modifying it. I'm going to have to actually cut the metal in order to allow the proper clearance for the larger speakers. All right, let me show you more up close why we had to cut that metal. So I'm just kind of holding everything in place. This is what the adapter bracket looks like and kind of where it would sit on the plate. If you look underneath, you have to cut that metal out to make room for the speaker. As you can see, there's still a little bit more that I have to trim off the side. But once I get that done, we should be able to screw everything in place. Just like the front doors, I'm going to cover the rear plates with vibration dampers just to absorb that speaker energy. One of my goals for this car is to basically eliminate any and all rattles from one, the car being old, and two, from the more powerful audio system. So it should be really nice when it all comes together. So now it's time to start routing the new wires, but there's not a lot of space in between the door and the cabin, like right in this cavity. So I'm going to go ahead and pop the little door pin, which isn't going to offer a ton of extra room, but it's just enough to have this little hook tool and modify the dust boot covers so I can fit the new wire. 
The reason we have to modify these dust boot covers is because, unlike a lot of newer vehicles that have this rubber tube going from the cabin to the door panel, the 240's wire harness has this plastic sheathing around it, and there's, I can't find a way that you can actually stick a wire through it, it's just too tight. So I have to make these pinholes that are just big enough to stick the wire through it and not worry about weather and stuff like that getting in. So once I fit everything through, I'll zip tie the speaker wire to the wiring harness and then maybe put a cover over that, see how it looks, and then we can get rid of all these old wires. These blue wires are the original speaker wires and they're really, really small, especially when compared to this big 16 gauge wire that I'm gonna be putting throughout the car. These are gonna be able to better handle the load from the amp to the speaker. And instead of using the little connector cable that came with the new speakers, I'm gonna put my own connector on the end of these so there's no splicing from a thick wire to a thinner wire and it's just completely unfiltered. I think it's gonna make a big difference. Now let's go ahead and fit the new bracket. All of the holes line up. It's just a matter of screwing it in place. Before I attach the speaker wires, I'm going to make sure the excess in here is securely fitted so again there's no chance of rattle or things bouncing around after the fact because you really only want to do this once. Looking pretty good. Let's line it up in the holes and get it set. All done. Right before I started shooting this video, I went ahead and put the entire passenger side together and thank goodness that that's all done and out of the way. Before I move on to putting the amp in and the head unit, I gotta install this last rear speaker. One thing that's really made routing these cables a lot easier is there's a lot of little body cavities like this throughout, you know, across the floor pan, of course, right here. It just makes it, makes it so much easier. Like a glove. Now I'm going to go ahead and tackle the sub install and before I explain what's going on here, let me explain what's going on here. So before we put the amp and the head unit in, I figured now is just as good a time as any to go ahead and start fitting in the new carpet, which I'll talk about more in the interior restoration part two. For this, I enlisted my friend Chris. So, <laughs> this has been a little bit more labor intensive than I initially thought it was going to be because we have to cut all of these holes that you see in the original carpet in the new one. So it's just a little bit tedious, but I got the carpet from Auto Custom Carpets. It's really nice. It's gonna add a lot to the interior. But while he's helping me with some fine tuning over there, I'm gonna go ahead and tackle this. So I'm gonna be using a kicker hideaway that I used to have in one of my other vehicles, not just for the convenience sake, but it's really tiny and it packs a pretty decent punch for its size. It's a loaded sub enclosure, so it's an eight inch sub with a built-in amplifier. It'll be really easy to wire up to the new head unit. Plus, it fits really nicely in between the shock towers and right beneath the seat. I'm gonna wrap the wood in a layer of the vibration damper just because I have one extra sheet left, and then I'm gonna drill some holes and get this thing bolted in. The other nice thing about doing this setup is that I have all of these noise barriers in the trunk. They raise the height just about to the tip of the wood, so when I put the carpet in, it's not going to create a big hump towards the rear, it's going to all look nice and smooth. The sub will then sit on top of the carpet and screw directly into the wood. Now I'm going to go ahead and work on swapping out this old head unit. 
It's a pretty simple process actually. I was lucky enough to find these wire harness adapters. Basically, they're already pre-cut, so you put these wires into whatever corresponding wires coming off of the back of the head unit, and then these two plugs plug into your factory harness so you don't have to tear up wires back there, and it's basically plug and play once you match everything up. The reason I decided to go with a double din head unit, I just wanted to do something different and honestly when you're looking online, because the 240 did not originally come with a double din head unit, a lot of the fitment guides say that they don't fit, where actually they do. If you pull this out, I've already undone everything and ignore all this mess back here, I was practicing earlier. Basically, you have this big metal bracket where the lower piece of storage attaches to and then you have the radio on top of it. If you just leave this storage panel out, it's got plenty of space and plenty of space underneath the dash to put that larger radio. One nice thing about how I'm doing this sound system is with the new wires, I'm actually going to run RCA cables from the head unit to the amplifier, and then the amplifier, all the speaker wires, are going to come out of that. So I don't have to wire up all these different speaker wires behind the radio with this uh, wiring harness adapter, so it's going to keep things really, really simple, and again, all of that new wire is going to make this thing sound great. So we're almost done. This has been so much more labor intensive than I ever could have imagined. The stereo, not too difficult, but the interior restoration was crazy. I can't wait for you guys to see that video. But So the only thing I have left to do now really is to clean up the wires around the amp, get it set in the carpet, and then plug everything in for the head unit, and we should be ready to test this thing. So I kind of wanted to explain why I have wires draped over the car too. So. With the RB swap, we're gonna do a rear mounted battery. So there's no point in me connecting the power wire for the sub and the amplifier through the firewall and doing all that kind of work if it's gotta be completely relocated to the back anyway. So for demo's sake, I'm just gonna string it across the car, hook it up to the battery, make sure it all works, and then tidy everything up in the back so we'll get everything permanently set when the new battery is in. Depending on the car and type of radio, sometimes you need a dash kit to help fill in some of the gaps created by aftermarket radios. Well, there's nothing like that that I found for a 240, so I got these universal trim rings, and I'm gonna put it around the radio, and it'll cover up any little gaps and stuff, and it's gonna look really nice. All right, everything is done. The interior is put back in, the audio system is finished, and I cannot even begin to describe how awesome of a feeling it is. It's been about a few months since I first took apart the interior, so it definitely looks strange to see everything put back together, but it's a very, very comforting feeling and everything turned out fantastic. After this video, I'm gonna put up the interior restoration part two, basically talking about all of the steps that I took with taking the interior apart, laying down all the sound dampeners, fixing some extra things and putting it all back together, some storage solutions that I'm gonna be using for back here, and all of the ways I'm gonna keep the interior protected for years to come. So definitely check that out once it's live. I know you guys have seen the amplifier placement already, but I'm kind of proud of how it turned out. So the reason I put it behind the passenger seat is because I didn't want to take up more trunk space than I needed to because I have that one laying flat and I'm going to have a battery right here someday. So storage space is already going to be pretty limited. Nobody sits in the back seat of this car and honestly it's almost impossible to fit a normal sized human in the back seat. So I sacrificed the floorboard on the passenger side and honestly it fits like a glove. So I routed everything through the carpet, the RCA cables going right there. And it sits far back enough and low enough that even with this all the way back and somebody sitting there, you don't have to worry about it coming in contact with the amp. So the primary reason I went with this head unit is because, you know, compared to a lot of aftermarket radios out there, this one appeared the most factory-like. The fit and finish is great. It has nice soft beveled edges. The buttons feel nice. There's no flimsy plastic or anything like that. It doesn't have a ton of features. The most important thing for me was hands-free telephone, Apple CarPlay, so all of that is going to be great. Now I have navigation in here, but it doesn't have a CD player or satellite radio, so it's missing some things that other radios have, but I chose the extra quality and the fit and finish over that extra stuff that honestly I'm never gonna use, and a lot of that you can get through your phone anyway. So this worked out really, really great, and with that universal trim ring, it fits perfect. There's no gap or anything. I'm super stoked. 
Plus, I have the base remote for the sub and the auxiliary port for the radio routed through the center console. So that looks really nice. I'm going to eventually find some liners to lay in here just to give it more of a fresh look. But when you open it, the dial is very easy to use. The cord is nice and secure. It's not going to go anywhere. And then you can hook up your phone, tuck it away, out of sight, out of mind. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. The 240 is really starting to come together, but there's still so much that has to be done. Keep an eye out for the interior restoration part two. Like I said, it's gonna be the next 240 video uploaded, and hopefully, if everything goes right, we should be on to the big break install after that. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe today. There's always a lot more where that came from. Take care, everyone.